On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we're back with my cheap McLaren. And in the last video, we put Tesla parts in it and broke the doors. Now, no matter what, I kind of want this car to have soft clothes, and that means using the Tesla parts. So, we're trying again today. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo, and like I said, I'm here with my 2012 McLaren MP412C, the uh, car that was named after your local fax machine. And in the last video, of course, we took out the normal old door latches and we put in some used Tesla latches. One of the boxes for one of those latches right there. And they're both in the car and neither door soft closes. And that's because those latches are used. They were really cheap. I paid 100 uh, in free shipping for one and $80 and like $25 shipping for another, which means I would have put soft closed doors in this thing for $200 instead of like 1400 just for the parts from McLaren. That's what I'm finding out now. I thought it was 1400 for the job. No, it's 1400 for the parts. So EMF Autos, uh, we've been talking about this. He of course wrote the book on doing these latches. Hundreds of people have done it and it is plug and play. There's no software changes. The, it's very simple to do. Like a switch recognizes that the door closed and then a cam like pulls the thing in and that's it. That's all you have to do to have soft closed doors. And they're amazing and it'll fix a big problem with this car and that problem is the doors don't shut. You have to slam them within an inch of your life. So. He sent me two more latches that he had in stock that are used and may fail exactly the same, but we're gonna try it today. Uh, he said, you know, let me know if it doesn't work and I've got more on the shelf and I'll keep sending you used ones, but I will not install used ones anymore because they break. But you guys know me, I'd rather do the work than spend a bunch of money. So I have no problem changing the latches again. So we're gonna put in another one right now. The garage, it was looking real clean and it was actually pretty reasonable to work in here. But this is all new stuff for the tech channel. We have like, uh, we have everything coming in. Cam every kind of camera, every kind of computer, and we are gonna relive the glory days of, of technology. I loved all this stuff, so I gotta put it somewhere. That's the, that's the real problem. Let's get this door latch in. All I did was touch the door. Let's see if it'll even soft close while it's doing this. <laughs> well, it stopped being dumb. At least you can do that. It's not the end of the world. Oh, but it won't open the door. One of these days. It'll eventually like catch the right. <laughs> All right, I give up. That's <laughs> so bad. Okay, starting our day off right. Taking the McLaren back apart. So I'll pull out my three, four mil hex. Just takes a, honestly, this is such an easy job. There's nothing I can complain about. Um, I mean, EMF Autos did say he does this in 20 minutes aside on a coupe. So definitely no big deal. It's easy to work on supercars. They just do some terrible design things. There's my latch. This is, of course, one of the new Chevalier ones that's getting returned. And all we have to do is tear it down real quick, pull out these four screws, swap the cable into the new one, drop the other one in. So this should go very quickly. But the only thing that's a little tough is the screws never like to come out. Like they get hung up in the housing. I sure hope this fixes it. If it doesn't, uh, the stock ones are going back in. I haven't driven the car in a week now. So we'll just slide this little guy apart. Paint some happy little trees right there. Okay, that was real time, in case you guys were wondering how long it takes to pull these latches. Give this a little twist, pop, cable comes out. That's about how easy this job is. This is the right one, right? Yeah, LHD, cool, cool. I think we've got it, finally, look at this. So the old one would come down and then come back up like a, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. This one's still not perfect, but it doesn't pop up as much as the old latch did. I feel like it could pull in a little bit farther. But that's pretty reliable and super nice. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the passenger side back together. That is a success now, obviously. It does all of the actions it needs to do, you know, indexing the window, which means that the car thinks the door is closed and 
the end of the day, as long as the car is told the door is closed by the latch, we're all good. So, and it always pops the door out plenty. The old ones, I'd have to like hit them multiple times over and over and over before that would work. So that seems solid. Let's start putting all this trim and the seat belts back in. And for the driver's side, we don't have a new latch. The one that was the worst one. Today, we're just gonna put the stock latch back in so I can go drive this car again. It's been, it's been too long. The driver's side latches are on the way. Hopefully they'll be here early next week and the entire car will have soft clothes. But even one side, that's a big improvement. I've got the black plastic cover back in that kind of hides all of the latch mechanism. It really lets you like access all the way back into the fenders here. Uh, it takes a long time to get those grommets back into position. So that's gonna take some work. If you're doing this yourself, just know that. And then hook up your, your airbag, uh, your seatbelt pretensioner, of course, and put your cable back in. You gotta have that cable pull there and you'll be covered in this black goo by that point. It's all over the place. Earlier this week, it took me a, basically an entire week to get it off my hands just from working on this thing. So luckily this stuff's all cast, these uprights that support the roof here, and they are incredibly nice. Like if you cross thread these, you're in trouble, uh, but you shouldn't cross thread them because they just go together so well. And looks like we're almost completely there. Put those four bolts in, tighten them down, and you can start reinstalling some of your trim. Or you could do that. That's a really bad idea, don't do that. Closing garage door. You have to swipe the door to get in. I didn't know you had to swipe it, just put your hand there. Yep. Like... Swipe. All right, now the real test. Does it soft close when Brandon closes the door? Yes, nice. that is amazing. Yeah. Also, I hate to say it, but after I adjusted my latch, this time when I put the original one back in, the door shut, amazing. With your door shut, so maybe I fixed it. Uh, I still want soft close, but at least you don't have to slam the door that hard. All right, what do you think? It's nice. First time riding in McLaren? Yep. Well, it was pretty fun. Uh, it seems like this door is good, so let's check. Do a little quick test. Okay, we took this thing out, drove it around for a little bit. I needed to uh, put like a 30 minute drive cycle on it just because, um, remove key from vehicle, it's in my pocket. Uh, the battery would have been dead after sitting for so long. And now I don't have to push on the door at all. It's perfect, I don't get it. It's so much better than it ever was before. Well, I promise you guys, nothing changed on the driver's side other than I set the latch up uh, with the screws loose and I pushed it all the way out towards the door and then tightened it down and it seems like it works really well. So we are good to go on the McLaren and it only took uh, a couple of minutes of work. I still think I'm gonna do the soft close on the other side. I did leave out the rear leather tread that's stacked up over there. So that's really all that's left to do. Now that the door latches are temporarily sorted on my cheap McLaren, it's time to take this thing out and let everybody drive it, including my dad, my sister, uh, my brother took it out, although we don't have that one on video, a whole bunch of people, and uh, see what their thoughts are on this absolutely insane car. We got Jake driving the 12C. The whole it was spinning like third. Man, it is pretty cold outside, I gotta say. And obviously, the car's on Sport Cup 2s, yeah. so they need a lot of heat. Is, Ooh, Tesla one is that? Is that a. He wants the smoke, there's no doubt about it. Unfortunately, the Tesla did not want the smoke. Man, how are you gonna ride around in a Ram 12 with this? Right. It's so funny feeling it spinning at like 60, 70 mile an hour and it just spin and then it backs off and it's hooked up again. But it doesn't spin in a sketchy way. It's just yeah. arrow straight and it does exactly what you want it to do. It's so good. It is drive-by telepathy and I love it. This is why I love the 911. This is a very but good car. Yeah. This is rear wheel drive, right? Rear wheel drive. Oh my god. But it strains itself out. Even if you're a little bit wrong, it's like, no, he probably didn't want to do that. And the computer's like, meh, meh. does it have a whole bunch of active like stability control? Everything. The computer manages like every microsecond of every wheel. And that's impressive because it doesn't yeah. feel like it. No. It feels natural. Love it, man. Oh, and it goes right back to automatic mode when you're just it's, cruising. Yes. I, I was just waiting on Jake to hate this car because he hates every car, but 
the programming's good. It, this does not bother me that much. I mean, obviously I would enjoy the manual, but I don't hate my life right now. It's a it's a quick dual clutch. The wind noise is insane though. It's yeah, this thing I always had issues with a whole bunch of wind noise coming through the front of the windshield. You want to see the really cool thing about this car? Sure. All right, so it has precog. Act like it's a camera focus button instead of a paddle shifter and hold it before the click to go down a gear. Okay. And then click it. Oh. Yeah. This is this is just Ah. It's way faster. It yeah. pre-selects the gear, <laughs> and then when you tap the switch, it goes okay. Yeah. So it's it's wild. This is a pretty cool old computer. Old computers are what I love. You guys know this from the Tech Throwback channel. <laughs> and this car is literally just an old computer. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> you only poured it like three seconds. I know. I so <laughs> I heard it go. Oh. <laughs> it went back to cruise control. Oh man, I guess I'm still going. Yeah, I would say floor right now, just so you can get one real hit. Stay in it. Get, it, get on the brakes, for real. You've got good brakes. No, like, use the brakes. Meow. Yeah, those aren't <laughs> brakes. You're, you're like, rubbing the brakes. It's cool to actually use them on this thing. It's like, Ugh. Oh, my gosh. It's, like, fun. <laughs> yeah. We'll just make one quick pull. to go do stuff like this but you couldn't take it anywhere because you know no key no roof none of the things you need to be a car right. huh right right yeah okay. stay in it for a second There you have it. Tons of people drove this car now and got to experience driving a McLaren, which is obviously kind of one of those rare things. So it's something I wanted to do for everybody. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjrgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. We good. Take off. <laughs> This is G5, no, this is not a challenger, huh?
I can't stop. I can't stop.